All righty. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. The title for tonight's teaching is Call Out. Some of the verses we're going to look at is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. And the date is September the 1st, 2022. All right, I don't know what to do with that. It says something is running slow. So hopefully it's all good. And uh, you guys... Can hear me all right. Let's see here. All right. Yep, yeah, that works there. <clears throat> um, somebody had asked me. So there you go. There's that. And hello to uh, everybody that is uh, joining. So when we dive into this, yeah, it says something about a key frame rate too low. So I don't know what that means. So we're just going to keep going like we do every week and um, it'll all work out. So thank you all for tuning in tonight. We're going to start in the Old Testament, which um, I've been finding that uh, we've been going into a whole lot more than uh, we have in uh, uh, past seasons, we will say. So so that's uh, interesting enough to be noteworthy. What does that mean? I don't know. We'll see. But... Uh, we will get going, and let's go into Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. So again, we're going to read the verse that I've attached to this uh, at the beginning here. So again, another thing that uh, hasn't been real common. says comfort oh comfort my people says your god speak kindly to jerusalem and call out to her that her warfare has ended that her iniquity has been removed that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Oh, come on. Sir Stephen, you, sir, good evening to you, too. What a blessing to have you on here with the rest of us. Going to be enjoying some good God stuff. So thanks for commenting and saying good evening. Um, I appreciate that. That helps me to see who is um, watching live. But yeah, I don't know what this whole key frame rate too low thing is. Hopefully, hopefully it'll just keep on um, being okay. Because I'm not, I'm not seeing an easy fix for what I can just do here. Let's see. I don't know. I've never, I haven't done anything different than what I have any other time. So I'm just going to keep going. So the first two verses in Isaiah 40, very interesting. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. And call out to her that her warfare has ended, 
that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Hey, Renee. Glad you chimed in as well. Hope you are doing good. Hopefully, uh, D chimes in as well. Look at that. Hi, D. Thank you for letting me know that you're here. I would imagine Bob and Irma are here too somewhere, and uh, there's others. Um, and so, blessing. <clears throat> there's, well, hi, April. Good evening to you. Glad you could join. If Kevin's around there, hello and what? Salutations. Um, so we've got this Isaiah 40 verses 1 and 2. How many people have heard that the warfare is over? Well, from, from my standpoint, I've struggled with when people talk about going to war and going to battle and we're going to just... Um, I get I get it, and I can go along with it to a point, but I very much prefer to stay in the rest, in the peace, in the calm of God, rather than battling, put on my armor. That isn't the armor that you think it is because that armor is Christ. You go and you look at all of the pieces of the armor, every one of those describes an aspect of Christ. And so here, in verse 2, it says, call out. sink into see we can sink into that i think only if we're not battling and here it says call out to her who's her well jerusalem and you understand jerusalem means place of peace and jesus is described as the prince of peace so call out to Jerusalem. And we're not talking about the geographic place. I don't know what this thing keeps telling me. That. Hopefully the, the video is coming through fine because it, it keeps telling me that something isn't going like it should. But I've plugged in everything that I've been doing for the past while now, so... Let's see. Yeah, I don't. Call out to her that her warfare has ended. I like that idea. Because from my standpoint, there's peace there. There's more comfort there. There is rest. Okay, Renee says that I'm working. I'm assuming that's what that is, is that I, I'm, I'm coming through fine. So that's good. Thank you, Renee. This is saying, call to her. So my call to the people, the chosen people of God. Your warfare has ended. Your battle is over. That thing that you're struggling with has come to an end. Hmm. What else? Well, it says that her iniquity has been removed. I think that's pretty good. It speaks of comforting his people. Now, if I'm going to comfort you, 
what's the likelihood that I'm also going to beat you up over things that you're doing or not doing that you shouldn't be doing or should be doing? Probably not, not very likely. Now, might you have done some stupid things and so you're kind of woe is me and so then I can come and comfort you? Okay. Speak kindly to Jerusalem. Call out to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed. And yep, this is the Old Testament. And yet this is what this is saying. All right, I hear you. I hear you. You know what somebody was just thinking? They're saying, well, yeah, Todd, but read the rest of two. It says that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Can't get around that one, Mr. O'Flanagan. Pastor Todd, you're kind of in a precarious position with this one. I hear you. Yep. Freaks you out a little bit, doesn't it? It's okay. It'll be okay. Call out to her. Let her know that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. How would you like to receive double for all your sins? Shall we see a show of hands that says, I would like double. Please give me double. I'm going to say yes. Pick me. Give me double with what it's talking about here. <laughs> right? He's like, no, 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 not double. Well, see, but here's the deal. This is way cool. In these two fur in these first two verses, our mind goes to double the punishment for our wrongdoing, right? Stephen's like, no, thank you. What a kind gentleman you are. I will accept uh, being skipped over for this uh, uh, assignment. Thank you very kindly. So no, thank you. See, our, our, our mind automatically goes to, I don't want to receive double the punishment. And Renee, nope. <laughs> right? See, we're like, nope, I don't want double the punishment for my sins. That's what everyone sees, reads, hears, feels, experiences when we read this. But that's not what he's saying. Listen to it again. Comfort, oh, comfort my people. Okay, I'm going to pause. When I read this, see if you pull from it punishment. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. All right, I will. I'll, I'll spell it out more for you. I get it. I get it. This received of the Lord's hand double. This double is not a punishment. You don't receive double punishment for your sins. This double is a double payment. It is twice 
the payment, it is this exceeding amount of payment for your sins. So then you don't have to worry about having a thought that says, is what Jesus did for me enough? Because if your bill was $100 and I paid just a hundred dollars. Your thought could go to, well, but but what happens if some other charges come in later? And so then I'm still going to probably owe something. And so God says, your bill is a hundred dollars. My payment is going to be 200. So there is no doubt on either side has your bill been paid. If, if uh, you have been kidnapped and the ransom note comes in, and it says, we will release you. You know, we have, put in your name. And we will release your name. Once the ransom of $1 million is paid. And the ransom comes in and it's two million. That is us receiving of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. You go, well, Todd, that doesn't say that. You can't add to that. I'm not. All I'm saying is you read verses one and two and find in there where there is the direction of you're going to receive punishment for you screwing up. And it's not there. It says, comfort my people. It says, speak kindly to my people. It says, call out to her and let her know that her warfare has ended. that her iniquity has been removed. How can that be? Well, that she has received of the Lord's hand, of the Lord's doing, of his effort, not yours. Double. For the reason, for the payment, for the penalty, God has paid abundantly to set you free. Let's read a few more verses and see if I might actually be, be on track with this. Now, Isaiah 43 through 8 says, which is, right, the next verse, because what I just read was Isaiah 1 and 2, uh, 40 verses 1 and 2. Verse 3, the very next verse says, A voice is calling. Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. And let the rough ground become a plain. 
and the rugged terrain of broad valley. Then the Lord, uh, the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Call out. Then he answered, What shall I call out? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. It says it twice that the all flesh is grass. Surely the people are grass. So the first part of this about clearing the way uh, for the Lord in the wilderness, make smooth the deserts and the highway, um, let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hills be made low. Come on. So that's almost like if you're down in the dumps, if you're in the valley, you're probably not doing so well. And if you're riding high, you're on the mountaintops. And these verses are speaking to, not that there's anything wrong, but he says, let's equal life out. Let the rough ground become plain, the rugged tree in a broad valley. Now, how can we do that? How about when we treat each other with love? How about when we look past the other person's actions to see the action of what God has done for that person? How about when we love that person Come on. Now, all people together will see how much God so loves the world. Because now, we as a people are unified. We don't have people that are way up here and people that are way down here. Because we understand that as a people, my good is really on my own. My good is no better than your bad. I can say that again. My good outside of Christ, my good that I do, the good deeds that I do, the good things that I do in life, they are no better than your worst day. outside of Christ. And in Christ, they don't matter. The only things that matter is things that are done through love, in love, with love. Because now I can be in your life the way that you need me to be in your life in this moment. These valleys are raised up. If you're in a bad, horrible, terrible, icky place and you're in the deep valley, well, you could be lifted up. And if you're riding high thinking that you're all that, all that in a bag of chips, right? Well, then you can be brought lower to understand that that is not 
such a good place to be. Now, there isn't anything wrong with being excited, being happy, being um, delighted in something good that's going on in your life. That's not what, what being on the mountaintop is talking about here. Even though it feels like you are, you could be riding this for you know, a day, 36 hours, a week, a month, whatever. Yeah, Renee says, bear each other's burdens and encourage and love. Pray. So we've got this. There isn't anything wrong because we are told to celebrate the accomplishments of somebody. And when somebody falls short, we are told to share in that to lift them up. We don't share in the good of that person going, we're going to take some of that away from you. No. But when it's the ugly part of life, we say, here, there you go. I can carry some of this. I can carry this part of it for you. I can help you in this. call out and then he answered what shall i call out that's a great thing it's like um all right i'm hearing you're telling me call out i can do that i'm on this what do i say what 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 um i'm there i, I i'll do it but what uh what what should i what should i call out and then he has this cryptic, all flesh is grass. And the loveliness of flesh is like the flower of a field. So now how many times do you, have you, or have you heard somebody calling out to the loveliness of of the actions of the flesh of somebody, of doing it from a performance standpoint, doing it from the standpoint of, look at my accomplishment. Even if they go, I give it to God. Because if you give it to God, that means that you've received it first. And that you get to dictate, you get to decide, you get to be the bigger man, the bigger woman. You get to be the bigger person. And say, I choose to give this glory and honor to God. Okay. How about instead you just understand that the good that you have in your life is because of your oneness with him. The fact that he said that he is in you and you are in him. And so now the goodness that he deserves, you get to reap the benefit of because you guys are one. You don't have to give it to him if he's part of who you are. He received it when you did. This calling out is, understand, you're living in the flesh and the loveliness of the flesh. And all of that dies. All of that fades. Right? The grass withers and the flower fades. When does that happen? When the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Huh. I thought God was good. God likes me. Well, this, these verses here speak to he adores you. He loves you to such a degree that he says, cast off 
those parts of you in the world that are of the world cast off all of those things that um are not everlasting that are not eternal is there anything wrong with celebrating a victory that you have in your life absolutely not nope there is nothing wrong with that it is when uh, it becomes more of a boasting and it becomes part of your foundational life of who you are and what you can do and achieve because look at what I have done. Now, I know that there's a, a, a really fine line there to be able to say, look at what I have done and have that be acceptable and saying, look at what I have done and have that not be acceptable. I get that. That's just something that we're gonna you're gonna have to just be okay with because that's the way that it works. So Isaiah 40 verses 1 through 8. Did you see in there where we're going to receive from the Lord's hand a double punishment for all of our sins? I don't see that, especially now when we get into these next verses. Oh, Stephen, if you're still on here, just as a side note, pause everybody else. Just, But Stephen, you, sir, um, if you want the the verses that that I, I print off for all the people that come to the house, because um, you've been here, um, I I send these out to uh, uh, some people that have asked me. And so if you would like to be added to that list, uh, let me know. All right. So there's no punishment. Yeah, Renee says, no, I, I agree with Renee. I mean, how could you not agree with Renee? I'm just throwing that out there that just, yeah. It's not that we received of the Lord's hand double punishment for all her sins. <laughs> yeah, come on, D. Uh, it's not that we do this, even though our mind goes there, right? Everybody was like, well, yeah, I don't want to receive double the punishment. No. But it's like, yes, I want to receive. And not only, you don't have to say, I want to receive. Understand that you have, because that's what he's telling you that he has done. He's like, call out and let them know that they have received from my hand a double payment for what they have done. I have covered it, and then I have covered it again because that's how much I love the world. All flesh is grass, and the loveliness of the flesh, the good deeds, all of the goodness that we think comes from the things of the flesh. They fade. They wither. And what do we have left? Oh, that's right, Todd. We have to wait until we die so that we can experience this goodness that you're talking about. I'll say you're right and you're wrong. Because you think that you have to die, and I'm telling you, you already have. So that you don't have to wait anymore. Because if you haven't, talk to me, and I'll take care of that for you. I'll help you with that. Just saying. 
So now let's go into First Peter. We'll keep cooking on this thing here. So First Peter, so it's the number one, and then Peter, and then ver, uh, chapter one. Yeah, 17 through 25. So First Peter, now we were in the Old Testament. Now we're going into the New Testament, and it is in the second half of the New Testament. 1 Peter 1, 17 through 25. We'll see how much of this I get through before I stop and veer off chasing rabbits. Peter, rabbit, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, let's see. If you address as father the one who impartially judges according to each one's work, Conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay on earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. All right, I am going to stop right there. So I, I made it 17, 18, and 19. So I made it three verses, so so uh, that works. 18, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold. Um, Last time I knew, silver and gold... They don't rust. They don't rot. They're here. They they don't break down. It's not a a a, a substance that um, deteriorates. And yet here, this says knowing. So you know you've got this in your noggin that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold. Um, I don't... Um, gold and silver are not perishable. And yet they are. You know why? Because this is speaking of your good deeds. And those good deeds because they're of the flesh, fade and wither. Because you were not redeemed because of your good deeds, because of the good things that you have done, because of the performance that you have. No. Oh. Says, knowing you know that you were not redeemed. Um, ransomed back. Uh, re, um, that ransom that was paid, now you were redeemed. So somebody paid a ransom to release you from bondage, release you from captivity. You were redeemed. You were rescued. Well, what was paid? Well, the Lord's hand that you received out of the Lord's hand double. And as this receiving wasn't to you, it was for you. Maybe that'll help some of you. That message keeps popping up and it just bothers me and I don't know what to do about it. So I just keep... It says action needed. So I'm just like, nope, ain't going to do it. You were not redeemed with perishable things like gold and silver, silver and gold. And then it goes on from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers. Well, what futile way of life inherited by the forefathers did they get? It was all performance. It was all based on 
I need to do this. I need to not do this in order for me to pay my captors off so that I can have some freedom. All flesh is grass and all grass withers. All of the loveliness of the flesh is like the flower and the flower fades. And understand that you were not redeemed. You were not rescued. You were not brought out of captivity by those things. Because those things perish. Those things, why? How do they perish? What? Because they fade away. Instead, where is it? But, 19. So, 1 Peter 1, 19. How were you redeemed? With, the, with precious blood. Now, if you just look at precious blood, well, that is something that is perishable. That is something that loses its potency, that loses its effectiveness, that um, dries up, that dries out, that, that does get washed away. And yet, he says, no, 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 no. You're redeemed with precious blood as of an unblemished, spotless lamb. The blood of Christ. Because that will not fade away. That does not wither. Let's go a little bit more. Uh, verse 20. For he, Jesus, was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you. Who, through him, are believers in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Don't stop at Jesus. Jesus is the gateway. Jesus is the door to God the Father. Okay, verse 22. Since you have, in obedience to the truth, purified your souls, for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. Okay, I'm going to pause right there. End of 22. You have, in obedience to the truth, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. Fervently love one another from the heart. This is not a command. This is not um, an edict, I think would be the right word. Come on. This is, this obedience that it speaks of isn't your action towards doing something or your action of resisting something. That's not this obedience. This obedience is you believing and you having faith that what Jesus did was enough. Period. That's it. This obedience is to the truth. Wow, well, let's see. Oh, is there somebody in the Bible that is described as the truth? Hmm, let's see, who could that be? <laughs> yeah, Jesus is the truth. Now you have obedience to the truth. And some people distort this and say, well, yeah, you have to be obedient to the things in red, the things that are printed in red in your Bible. No, that's not what this is saying. Your obedience is saying, believing, having faith 
that what Jesus did is enough for you and for me. Your obedience, if you want an action, if you, if you want to see this in action, you know if you believe that what Jesus did was enough based on how you treat somebody else. How you interact with them reveals whether you actually believe it or not. Just going with that, that's the way that that works. <clears throat> a sincere love of the brethren fervently love one another from the heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Verse 23. Here it is. Now, keep in mind what we've talked about up to this point. Right? We have all flesh is grass. And all of the good that comes out of the flesh is like the flower of the field. How about way up in two where it says, call out to her and let her know that her, her, that your and my warfare has ended. Not will end, but has ended. Hmm. How's that work? So all I'm a flesh. And it says here that the all flesh is grass and that grass withers and the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Oh, yeah, that's right. You said that we get to have this after we die. And that's what you're waiting for. That's what your expectation is. And I said, if you haven't died yet, I can help you with that. Which freaked out a few of you. I get it. It'll be okay. Because you understand that you cannot be born again unless you have died. And we get to claim death because Jesus did it for us. And now my connection with him allows me the legal right to say that I have died. And it allows me the legal right to say I am born again. So don't connect yourself with the grass of the field and the flower, your goodness based on your flesh. Because here you go. Verse, so 1 Peter 1, verse 23. It says, For you have been born again, not of seed, which is perishable, but imperishable that is through the living and enduring word of God. And now in 1 Peter, he references Isaiah 40. So verse 24, for all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flowers of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which was preached to you. So what am I calling out? What are you to call out? Hey, all of you all, the things that you're doing are like the grass of the field 
and the flowers of the field. They will fade and they will wither. No, don't do that. I would suggest not. How about instead we call out and say, Your warfare time has ended. Come and have peace and have rest. Live in this place of comfort that allows you to breathe. Live in this place that says, even though I have chaos in my life right now, I get to handle it differently. Come on. He says, no, that's beautiful. Rest in Jesus. Right? D is, in the past, D has talked about soaking in. Instead of putting on, right? We soak in. We soak into. There's no effort there. It's this engulfing. We get to have this peace that surpasses our understanding because the warfare in your life is over your iniquity has been removed and the payment the punishment for your shortcomings your sins the things that you've screwed up on. You have, you are, and that you will have been properly, fully paid. There's no more worry. There's no more concern about Did what was paid, is that enough? Given. Hey, Gordy. Appreciate it. Appreciate being on here too, man. I am calling out. You are to call out that the warfare has ended that the iniquity has been removed, that this double, what we have received by the Lord's hand is a double payment for us to be redeemed. So there is no question that we have been rescued, not that we will be someday after we already pay for the price ourselves by our own death. Instead, it is, come on. He has, by his hand, paid double for us. Uh, one of the verses that comes to mind is, uh, if somebody... Um, uh, forces you to walk one mile with him, walk two. Double. And you could, I'm going to say it, and then we're going to move on. Um, you could say that the double not only pays for your spirit, but it also pays for your body. All right, let's see. Um, 
Gordy put John 10.10, 10, which is the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, and I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. That's right, and it really rocks you when you understand in the verses uh, before this that the thief isn't the devil, the thief is the law. And those who apply the law to life, that is who the thief is. Just saying I did a teaching on that a while ago. Um, <clears throat> But, uh, all right. So hopefully you guys are getting this. Hopefully hopefully it is it is uh, being received in the way, come on, religion. That's right. Exactly. So hopefully you, you, you are getting this with this, this call out that you're hearing the call out that says your warfare has ended. You get to sink into the goodness, the comfort, the kindness. Your iniquities have been removed and all of your sin has been paid for by a double portion. So this call out, this, uh, the last verses uh, are interesting. I mean, the, the stuff that we just went through, Isaiah 40, 1 through 8, and then 1 Peter 1, 17 through 25, really speak to, yeah, the grace, come on. It, it, they're, they're beautifully put together. And help us understand that this life is lived now because we have been, what does it say, First Peter 1 Peter 1.23, for we have been born again, not of a seed which is perishable. So our born again is not being born again in the flesh because all flesh is is like the grass of the field, and the loveliness is like the flower of the field. Come on. Come on, see? Whoa, such goodness. You have been born again. Not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. And what is that? Uh, let's see, in Isaiah, it says, but the word of our God stands forever. First uh, Peter 1.25 says, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So imperishable, lasts forever. I think that works. So now we have been born again, and now we're born again of the word. Which is why we should believe the word. And this word is more than just Jesus. This word is, well, Isaiah, who says that our warfare has ended, that our iniquity has been removed, and that we have received of the Lord's hand double for our sins. That payment has been made for us in the amount of double for all of our less than perfect actions. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. Right. Let's see. Jesus. You know, I can't. Jesus is enough. He is enough. Praise God for sending his one and only son. Come on, right? All right. So now these next verses, we're going to go back into the Old Testament. And this is interesting. There's a, a pretty big chunk of verses. 
and we're still dealing with call out. I don't have two topics here. We're, we're, I think that we have enough to understand what this call out is for us. And I think in first Kings, it speaks to who are you calling out to? You say, I am Todd. I am calling out. I call out every day. I call out the sins of people. I call out. Oh, wait a minute. That's not how this is supposed to work. I call. Um, Wait a minute. All right. Just something to look at. So this is in the Old Testament. This is early on. And remember, back in that time, the people chose not to have a personal relationship with God. Instead, they wanted a mediator between them and God. Thus, the prophet. God would speak to the prophet, and then the prophet would speak God's words to the people. God didn't want it that way, but... He said, if that's the way that you guys want it, that's the way I'll deal with you. So let's see about applying these verses in 1 Kings to our life. How do we look in our life? Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, how is it, Baal, however you want to put that, B-A-A-L. But if Baal, follow him. But the people did not answer him a word. I didn't know that they wanted to speak to God through a prophet. Is that where a priest and a confession comes from? All right, D. Um, way back, right there, um, all of the people are on the mountain, and then God comes and he settles on the top of the mountain. And God's like, come up here. And the people are like, no way, no how. Ain't going to happen. Um, we pick Moses. Moses, you go up. And then you come down and you tell us what God said and we'll do whatever you say. And that's where that started. And so, yes, you could definitely um, um, have that, the priest, the confession, um, where it's this, um, I need to be your your uh, mediary or your your go between. That there needs to be somebody go between you, a regular common person, and God Himself. It's just a bunch of hooey. It really is. Could it work? Absolutely. So hooey might be a little bit strong, but I don't think so. Um, you're welcome. Uh, because what happens is God wants to interact with his people. And they're terrified. Because he did say anything that touches his mountain is going to die. And so they're a little freaked out. They're like, nope, Moses, you go and do it. And then even Moses then, no, well, yeah. So so you've got this, right? So he brings down the, um, the Ten Commandments. And so there's this separation and you always have God up here and the people here and no direct connection, no, no relationship. 
Again, not how God planned it. Because again, remember, he walked in the cool of the day with Adam in the garden. He had that, that intimacy. And don't say when sin came in, they lost the intimacy and because God couldn't be in there. Don't, don't do that. Just don't. Because that's not right either. When we think that we can do something, oh, very good. I'm glad you got it too, Renee. Good. When we think that that our part of this relationship is in our actions of doing good and not doing bad, we have to eliminate Jesus from that equation, which then means that he didn't have to come and go through all the stuff that he came, that he went through in order for us to be able to go before the Father and not tremble in fear. And so this whole time before Christ, and you can even say now, but it's even if it happens now or when it happens now, the intention for that is for people to understand that they get to have this personal, intimate connection relationship with God the Father without having to go through somebody to get it. Because you'll never have a connection having to go through somebody to have that. It's not... <clears throat> okay. So in First Kings eighteen twenty one through thirty nine, again Old Testament again, and this is this this calling out. This, where do you stand? It is a little bit different than the other verses that we uh, have have gone through, but. Think about where are you? Because it starts out with um, Elijah asking the people, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? Now, could somebody ask you that same thing right now? How long are you going to hesitate between believing what God has said and done and attempting to do stuff yourself. How long are you going to hesitate between these two opinions? So those are the two opinions. Elijah Jesus is enough. Balal, however you say it. Those people are people that need to do it, need to have this connection based on themselves. So how long are you going to hesitate between the two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. People didn't, people didn't answer him a word. 22. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Now let, let them give us two oxen. Let them choose one of the oxen for themselves, cut it up, place it on the wood, but do not put fire under it. And I will... Uh, prepare the other ox and lay it on wood and I will not put fire under it then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire he is God 
And all the people said, that's a good idea. So Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one ox for yourself and prepare it first, for you are many. And call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. Then they took the, uh, the ox, which was given to them, and they prepared it, and they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. And they leaped about the altar, which they made. And it came about at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Call out with a loud voice, for he is a god. Either he is occupied, or gone astray, or is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep, and he needs to be awakened. I heard one guy say that he had looked into this, and uh, one of these things that he's saying, well, maybe your God is in the bathroom. <laughs> verse 28, so they cried with a loud voice and cut themselves according to their custom with swords and lances until the blood gushed out, of, out on them. When midday was passed, they raved until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice, no one answered, and no one paid attention. Performance life? I think this was the site I was using for performance. Doesn't matter. Performance life? Or Jesus is enough? These guys are using performance. And I know that's not quite how this is, but hopefully you it'll help drive the point home. Verse 30. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near me. So all the people came near him. He repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. So with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two measures of seed. And I don't remember, that's either... Um, 11 gallons or 22 gallons. So a lot of seed either way around it. Then he arranged the wood and cut the ox in pieces and laid it on the wood. And he said, fill four pitchers with water and pour it onto the burnt offering and on the wood. And he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord. Answer me. That this, pe that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God. And that you have turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up all the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. It's not our effort. When we do this, 
we live this life. When I say when we do this, I mean when we do life. Because you're still going to do things in life that you should do. They're good to do. But now you do them with the heart that says you're doing them because God loves these people. Because God has directed you to do this. Not, I want to be noticed by God and hopefully he will allow me to stay. Hopefully he will let me in. Hopefully he'll, he'll turn a blind eye to my uh, shortcomings. Too often, that's why you do the things that you're doing that you say, in the name of the Lord, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm reading my Bible because I think it pleases him. And I've had people say, well, Todd, do you think that uh, um, it doesn't please him? Well, Todd, are you saying that we shouldn't do things to please him? And both of those questions, both of those statements are very manipulative. And I said, what's important is that we believe what has been done for us. Because this call out should not be, you need to do which is almost exclusively all that you hear. When you think about, you go, well, yeah, my pastor was just calling out. I could, I could link the message from last Sunday to the pastor calling out. Well, except for they were calling out to make sure that we were doing the right things and we were stopping from doing the wrong things and that we were doing more with the church and we were um, volunteering more and um, if we were doing things that God's word says that we shouldn't be doing that, that we would remove ourselves so the church would not get a black eye by having us being a volunteer there. But it doesn't mean that we can't not go there, even though some cases we're told, uh, yeah, no, you shouldn't come back here. This call out isn't to tell you to improve your performance. This call out is Isaiah 40 verses 1 and 2. I'm calling out to comfort you. I am calling out to speak kindly to you. And this calling out, I am not doing that. I cannot do that. Well, I'm also saying you're a screw up in this area of your life. This calling out is to tell her that her warfare has ended. He loves when we believe Jesus is enough. Come on, faith. He is happy when his children sing to him and love on others because we are loving like Jesus did. That's right, Renee. That it, it, that it. This call out is to say life is a whole lot better when you understand that it's not based on your performance, but it's based on the performance that Christ has already done for you. The call out says, 
Your iniquity has been removed. The payment for your sin has been paid, and not just once, but it's been paid double. He says, that's why we serve Rene. We serve him from our hearts. Come on. See, there is this love affair that we have with that. There is this gladness, this goodness, when we do it for the right reasons, that we're not doing this to show somebody else how good we are and how in we are with God. And, you know, don't you wish you could have a relationship with God like I have? Instead, we do this because this is what he wants us doing, maybe for the rest of our life, maybe just this one time. And again, that time frame is really irrelevant too. This call out, I want to call out to you to tell you that your warfare has ended. You're victorious because the battle has been won for you. <laughs> See, there you go. There is this, this desire that we have that, that we need to do this and this and not do this and all these things. All that stuff is performance. And it's all worthless because it's all based on, what is it? The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of God endures forever. That's where we get to live. That's where we get to be. Why? Where does it say that? Verse 23, 1 Peter 1, 23. For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word of God. We live life from that realm, from that aspect, not from all flesh is grass and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. Why? Well, because the grass withers and the flower fades. And you need to understand that you were not redeemed with perishable things. Come on. You are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. And through Christ, you are believers in God because God is the one who raised Christ from the dead and gave him glory. So that our hope, our faith is in God. Come on. And so now we get to take this and apply this to our life that says this call out is saying the things that you're striving to achieve for yourself have been taken care of for you. And now you can keep doing what you want to do, what you are doing, if that's what you love to do. Because now you're not striving to achieve something. You're, you're doing it. You're putting your effort into it because that's where your love is. Whew. All right, everyone. I hope you received encouragement from this one. Hopefully you can take this and apply it to your life. You can... Put this into you and help and have this help you grow in your relationship between you and God, God and you. And then as a result of that, have your relationship between you and other people and just yourself. Have that become better. 
And so with that, I will say that next week, yeah, next, I'm pretty sure it's next week. Um, oh, is it these? Let's see. I have to tell you, it has refreshed my heart tonight. Oh, indeed. thank you. <laughs> Another great teaching. Thank you so much. I needed it tonight. Oh, man. Yeah, I love that. I'm going to pause there and say, oh, let's see. Corey says, if we're serving to strive for the pleasing of men, then it's religion and not serving Christ. Absolutely. So next week, this live deal is going to be, I don't know yet. It's going to be earlier in the day, more than likely. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be in the morning on Thursday instead of um, in the evening like it normally is. Um, but I'll post something. Um, Renee says, Pastor Todd, that was one more revealing teaching. <laughs> thank you for all that you do. Oh, thank you, Renee. What a blessing. So thank you for sharing these. Thank you for the comments. This interaction that we have is beautiful. All right, D, thanks for letting me know. Um, I know it's, 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 screws up. it's just there's a few times a year that um, I, I work my schedule around being able to still do these, and it's just not going to work for me next week uh, to be able to do that, but I still want to have the teaching done. Uh, and so I will. It's just I'll, I'll post it and say when it's going to be. And so thank you for sharing this, for commenting on it, for giving the reactions, watching this live, watching this at another time. Uh, I know they get, uh, they can be long for a lot of people um, and too short for others. Yeah. And I get that. And so if you need to take this in chunks of 15 or 20 minutes, um, come on, Gordy, that's right. So, um, after I get done with this, I save it and I put it onto the YouTube channel. And so you go and look for Unshakable Foundation. So U-N-S-H-A-K-A-B-L-E. Foundation. And um, you can subscribe there and you can um, get that. He's talking about you, Ray. This is Cordy's late. It's not long enough. I get it. It's all good. Um, and so thank you for sharing this for, uh, for watching this whenever, for listening to this, when, whenever you can fit it into your life, I am encouraged by that and I am blessed by it. And hopefully you've received something from this, that your, uh, time that you watch this, however long it was whether you watch just a few minutes or you watch the whole hour and a half uh, deal, hopefully you were encouraged by it and that you could apply this to your life. So with that, I am going to say thank you again and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye for now.